since we got a little road trip this morning you guys can see it is a little bit snowy there's like almost an inch of snow on there it's crazy it's like um not even quite the middle of october right now we got snow i've like never seen it that early check the lights on the trailer it's good snowball making weather yeah we're going down to kentucky today to pick up a pretty big load you guys have to hang around and see what we're picking up we've got some permits ordered for it checking all the lights out the snow is crazy Good morning guys, we're heading down to uh, Central Kentucky this morning. You guys probably guessed that we're picking up a big old DAK dozer this morning. It's actually an ex-military machine. Not sure if I'll be able to film where it's at, but uh, if we get it out of there, we'll give her, give her a good walk around there. So they've got the blade off of it already. Uh, this tractor has a ripper on it, so just the tractor and the uh, ripper thing weighs around, I think 70,000 pounds or so. Um, with the blade on the way about 80,000 so but uh, we'll have to come back down and get the blade and another load um, we're uh, heading over towards Columbus now we're going to get on I-65 south and uh, truck our way on down there we got out of the snow it's kind of crazy there's not much snow over here but for us to get snow in uh, middle of October is kind of crazy we usually don't see anything till like maybe the end of November or something and usually most of the time it's almost Christmas time before you can actually plow any snow or anything so it's kind of crazy but uh, and it's supposed to be like 80 degrees this weekend so you never know what's going on this time of year so we're going to uh, get down the road here and uh, go get this thing picked up we'll catch you guys when we get down there
All right, got the big beast loaded up. I got a uh, whole slew of chains on it. So the DOT makes you carry half the weight in chains of what you're hauling. So you gotta do the four corners and uh, put the rest in chains. So this machine weighs like 68, 70,000 pounds. So right now I've got about 39, 40,000 pounds in chain working load rate going on there. So should be covered in that aspect of it. Yeah, she's a beast. We've got to run up to the truck uh, truck stop, check my weights on the scales. Um, sitting pretty close when I'm sitting downhill. Um, I'm permitted for like 120,000 pounds right now. I should only weigh around 110, so should have a little wiggle room in that aspect of it. But uh, I'm gonna hop up here and tape that exhaust down, and then we'll hit the road. All right, there's the blade to the dude. Pretty good looking blade. Not had a blade skin on. It's pretty tight and everything. It's a super nice tractor. It doesn't look real pretty, but it's got brand new undercarriage under it, basically. We got a lot of money just in undercarriage, so we'll get it back home and see what we're gonna do with it. It runs and operates great, so I'm gonna hop up here and tape up the exhaust. All right, got that covered up. The reason I do that, you see this big old turbo in here. Slim chance air could blow down that pipe and actually spin that turbocharger when it's uh, not getting any engine oil lubrication. So it's always a good idea. We don't need, need to be buying a turbo for this dude. So I'll set you guys up here and you can ride along. All right, all right. So we're getting ready to take off here. I was just looking at my uh, Kentucky overweight permit. They route me just a little bit different way than the way I come in here. The way I come in was not uh, real friendly. So we'll uh, get up out of here. It looks like it's gonna be right at the truck stop. So. We'll head up that way and uh, get this dude weighed and see where we're sitting at. We got like uh, uh, 65, about 70 pounds on the drives right now, which may be a little light. Well, anyway, I know when it gets up towards 80 is about where I need to be sitting at. We're all out of level and stuff, so we'll get up to the scale house. I'm permitted for um, 119,200 pounds. I've got 13.2 in the front, 23 on the first drive, 23 in the second drive, and then I got 60,000 on the three axles back. So hopefully we got that covered and uh, we'll be all right. So you guys can ride along.
I got an online app here where you can just uh, do this all online without having to get out. Charging a fee of $13. We'll uh, pull up here and see what it uh, what we get. $113,460. Alright, we'll take a look. Unfortunately, we're a little heavy on the trailer axles, uh, 2,580 pounds. So, unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to freaking back this tractor up. I got it all chained down, unfortunately. Uh, we're all right on our gross, but we're 1220 in the front axle, 38,660 on the drives, 62,580. So, we've got to back that tractor up. Oh, probably a foot or so, maybe, to get some of that weight off. So, I got to unchain that dude go back through all it again it's going to be a great time all right got everything unchained we're going to back her up here a little bit hopefully this thing starts close hopefully I didn't back her up too far I think what I'll do I'll just uh, throw a couple chains on and up to get back over to the scale it's just right across the street make sure we're good there we throw all the chains on it because that would be a mess I'm gonna back that ripper up and put it on I got a cross member right under there so it should be good all right I'll get a couple chains thrown on her and we'll go back across the street for a reway first time it cost $13 it cost $350 to reway again so you don't have to pay that $13 again now we're getting up close to 80 pounds on our airbags we should be all right hopefully I'm not hauled one of these d8s for a long time so I don't know where they need to sit at on this trailer it's been almost five or six years so all right we're close you guys see that 59 680 we're allowed 60,000 
we're good on our other axles. I'm gonna call that good. Almost wasn't enough, just lacking about a couple hundred pounds, 300 pounds, but hey, it's there. Um, I'm gonna pull on over there and chain this dude down and uh, call out a win and we'll head on up the road. see I've set my trip odometer if you remember a few months ago I actually uh, did the same thing with the uh, track loader what I'm gonna do if somebody can guess the exact miles from where we picked up the dozer um, to the shop one way the distance I will give them a uh, swag pack we'll throw in a hat shirt stickers all that good stuff so leave your comments below if you can guess how many miles I picked this thing up from in uh, central Kentucky and uh, one way back to the shop so Fuel over here currently is five dollars and thirty nine cents a gallon at the pilot here, so we'll uh, we're gonna get out of here, and you guys can watch a little time lapse of heading back to the shop. station coming up here. I don't know if it's open or not. Turn you guys on. If it is, we'll go through it here. It's one of the big reasons why I moved that dozer. We was only off about 2,500 pounds, but I knew the scale was up here, so we got to be all legit going through it. They're telling us, they're telling us to enter the way station. They're not happy. <laughs> I had a sign up there that says you can bypass. They know we're way overweight, so they're going to come in here and check us. So. Keep on heading north. Oh, 
we pulled in there and stopped, they probably check and uh, uh, see if we had a permit and all that stuff. So checking our DOT numbers and all that good stuff. So probably looking at chains. And, but anyway, we're gonna head on back to the shop. guys can tell but we're coming in a little town in Nashville Indiana it's actually where uh, we're based out of we're actually about seven miles from here but we have a Nashville Indiana address this is actually a little tourist town it's kind of busy this time of year because you guys can tell the leaves are turning orange and red colors but a lot of people travel here just to it's got a bunch of little knickknack shops and stuff so if you guys want to come over and check it out and stop by we had had a guy yesterday stop stop by the shop they're over here checking nashville out so just a little little town kind of cool we're bringing a big od8 up right up through the middle of town it's actually a state highway.
it. Just gonna stop in the middle of the road. Right before the freaking hill. Well, you guys can see there's a big hill in front of me. It's nice. Nice when you got an 18 speed, we can bust through all the gears and split them going up a hill like this. It's got a 550 cat in, it's a C15, like a 6NZ prefix. If you guys know anything about your cat motors, you know what all that means, but basically it's a pre-emission single turbo cat motor. One of the better ones I made, but the big thing about this motor, you know, we're weighing 113, 14,000 pounds right now. It doesn't pull any different whether it's got that much weight on it or 60,000 pounds. It doesn't even know it's on there. It cruises down the highway nice, but you don't appreciate that bigger motor and that extra power until you get over that 80,000 pound mark. Like right now, we're going up a grade and we're still splitting gears, climbing up, up through the gears. So, very strong motor, but like I say, you don't appreciate it until you get that bigger load on it. It doesn't feel like much, you know, it's when you're weighing 50, 60,000. I think this, this motor's not that strong, but when you start stacking more weight onto it, it doesn't slow down at all. Like right now, we're going, getting ready to go up a big hill here, but. Uh, it doesn't know much is behind it right now, so you guys can take a look at the leaves here as we go through. Then we got a big hill to go down on the other side here. So this 18 speed transmission, I can split each gear. It's basically an 8 speed. You got a high and low, and actually you can split each gear, so. There's about a 200 RPM range when you're splitting your gears. I don't know if you guys can see there, but I'll run it up to about 1700 when I'm going up a hill. Shift that gear and it'll fall back in around 1450, 1500 or so. But uh, normally if I'm on flat and not pulling much weight, I'll just run it up to about 1500 and shift it. And go from there because it's a big, bigger cubic inch engine. It doesn't need to be revved up, so don't do any good.
finder series. These actually come off my other trailer. Been having problems with them all summer, but I finally got them figured out. You guys can see that thing still super tight. We're having problems with them getting tight. They're actually getting tight. They were coming loose all the time. That was the big thing. I had a lot of other people calling that they were coming loose. I'll tell you what we did here in a moment on those, but been using them a few times now after we did a little work to them. They seem to work, be working great. Two more here, they're nice and tight, never loosened up. So as soon as I got these things early in the spring, I never could keep them tight. They would be tight when we took off, but they loosened up just a couple miles down the road. I had nothing but problems with them loosening up. I actually ended up talking to um, Steve that uh, invented these things. Super nice guy. I talked to him on the phone. And uh, we went over some things. The big thing is you got to have this handle up against whatever you're working on. We're doing everything right the only thing we wasn't doing right they needed grease in them i think they uh, didn't really get greased the factory actually took a plate off there wasn't any grease in them so that was our main problem all along was the grease situation so we took them all apart greased them all up put white lithium grease on the uh, rods running them in and out and that seemed to uh, fix our problems for sure on that part of it so if you guys got some of you having problems with them coming loose or something grease them up and that will fix all your problems what's happening they're actually not getting all the way tight and they're kind of binding up because there's no lube and stuff in there so but uh, this batch i got early in the year like i said we took a couple covers off there was no grease in there i just assumed everything was greased up when i got them so i talked to steve though that was the only thing we could come up with was going wrong but as soon as i lube those things up they've been working perfect so i may buy some more and put in this trailer because these are actually out of my other trailer i don't use this trailer quite as much but uh i may switch over and get some for this It's still warm. Oh no. Batteries are dead. Just my luck. Alright, try it now. Gonna have to preheat her, bud.
right, you guys make sure my pin went down. Pick this thing up. different heights you can set it up real easy hook your lines up we're done here all right we got all unloaded here got the dozer stuck in the shop there and there'll probably be another video on that thing it need a little bit of work, but it's got good solid bones for sure. Um, need some exhaust manifolds and that kind of good stuff. So, you guys seen that video on the D7F? Hopefully, it doesn't turn in that kind of mess. So, but uh, I did write down my miles, um, what I drove one way coming back. So, you guys, want to bleep bloop that in the comments down below? And whoever gets closest without going over like the price is right, we'll uh, contact you guys in a couple months here, probably towards the end of the year here around Christmas time. And, Maybe get a little gift pack out for you guys so um you guys want to see more work on that dozer you might consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that down below and uh if you like this kind of video it's been a little while since i've been in the truck i've been busy in the shop dad's been driving a truck for me he's actually on vacation right now so that's why i'm back in it so i know you guys like the trucking videos might do another video let me know i gotta go down and get that blade i gotta drop a skid steer off and uh maybe pick up a little mini x ray on the way back so might take you guys along for that too so let me know in the comments what you thought about today and uh hit that thumbs up button helps me out a lot so we'll catch you guys next time